Guernsey, home to the world's smallest church and quite possibly the biggest collection of ABBA memorabilia. It's all housed in Vaughan Davis's home, a shrine to the Swedish supergroup, dating back 30 years. You've been collecting this since, what, the age of 13? Yes, that's right, going back uh, to 1974. And now, 30 years ago. Early picture of you here, very fetching hairstyle, I must say. Uh, yes, uh, that's one that I don't really like to sort of show on the wall, to be honest with you, only because of the hairstyle, but uh, yes, that's right, 1979 backstage at Wembley. Was that an ABBA-inspired cut? Uh, I think it was the fashion at the time. Right? There's much more stuff shoved into suitcases in the shed, we're told. The family moved home to find space enough to put all this on the wall. From the bottom of these stairs upwards, it's Vaughan's domain completely. I just uh, I pop up occasionally when we have parties, but other than that, I stay well out of it. And he keeps it clean, he does everything? Does he does it? everything, yeah. This is his room entirely. I do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm frightened to death to touch anything, just in case. You never know. When he's not working as a travel agent, Vaughan finds time to contribute to the ABBA fan club magazine and makes the headlines himself whenever he meets the group. He's also organising this year's ABBA Fest and, of course, looks after his own valuable collection. I'm totally amazed at this huge variety of merchandise that was available. What have we got? We've got the soap, the jigsaws, the handy bendy benny doll. I remember going to Woolworths actually and they were in a bargain basement bin because they didn't sell that well, to be honest with you. Uh, however, now they're probably one of the most prized items. The rest of the family don't all share Vaughan's passion for ABBA. I think he's a bit mad because um, like they're, they're not around, around anymore. So I don't think they should like them anymore. He should go into a different group. Choosing another band, that's not the name of the game for Dad, he's unlikely to take a chance on anybody but ABBA. And here's the man, here in person. This is Vaughan. Hello, Vaughan. When, did this, uh, when did this all start? Well, I suppose 30 years ago, dare I say. 30 years of Eurovision, 30 years of being a fan. Frightening, isn't it? Where does the time go? I, I found it frightening, actually. I remember that night very distinctly. It was huge, wasn't it? I don't it know was why. I don't so. know why they made such an impression. Well, I know why Agneta made an impression on me, frankly. She looked absolutely gorgeous, didn't she, that night? Very much so, yes. I mean, 500 million viewers, that was the platform that they needed to launch their career. Let's face it, at the end of the day, a big influence of British and American music in our charts. Uh, a Swedish band, how are they going to break through? The Eurovision came on the scene and they did it. You know, mm -hmm. they, they came on stage in platform boots and the star-shaped guitar and the costumes. And it was like a sort of a cannonball straight out of the screen. H had you heard of them beforehand? No, I hadn't, in mm -hmm. fact. I'd always been a, a fan of Eurovision. Um, and I was supporting Olivia Newton-John that year, in fact. So yes. Very much the boom bang bang style uh, mm -hmm. stuff. But, of course, this group came on stage and they were the first group that ever won the Eurovision Song Contest with almost sort of a, a rock and roll song. And uh, I thought that it would change Eurovision overnight, but needless to say, it has gone back to the old sort of format. But it launched them on their international uh, career. Do you, do you buy and sell? Do you, do you trade your um, memorabilia over the years, or, or are you just pure collection? It's pure collection, to be honest with you. A lot of it goes back to the 70s. Uh, lots of sort of um, memorabilia from the various record companies worldwide. And so it's, it, it means a lot to me from a personal point of view. And Gina, your wife, long-suffering or not? Uh, I would say so, yes. How yeah. much of the house is taken up with the abbot? Is it all upstairs? <laughs> it's all upstairs, yes. I have a music room, in fact, which also has other artists as well. But needless to say, the, the, uh, the abbot influence is there, certainly. And you've seen the play Mamma Mia? Yes. yes. How many times? Uh, a dozen times. I mean, are you one of those ones dancing in the arms? Very much so. I think it's one of those shows, though, you know, it's... Uh, it just, it makes you feel good when you come out of the theatre, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it certainly works. Yeah, it's great stuff, Vaughan. Thank you very much indeed. If you're a big ABBA fan, uh, check out our website. You can win tickets and accommodation for the June ABBA Fest in Brighton. That's going to be great, isn't it? The big it's glitter, be... spangles and platforms awash. There is there's sort of a link here we could make to Richard and the ABBA Fest mm. in Brighton. I think mm. he would enjoy himself down there. I think that. he will do. He's here as well. Next, to talk about... Do you remember that moment then, 30 years ago, when they burst onto the stage at the Eurovision Song I Contest? I do. I was 12 years old watching uh, the Eurovision Song Contest in black and white, and uh, they came on stage in their costumes and boots and everything, and uh, wow, it was just that sort of impact, you know, fantastic. And you were grabbed right there and then, were you? I was, very much so, yes. I mean, uh, if you look at ABBA as a whole, I mean, visually, Agneta and 
and Frida, fantastic. And of course, musically, Bjorn and Benny, they wrote some fantastic stuff. They really did. And it was stuff that sort of uh, caught you on second hearing. But they encompass so much music um, from different fields. I mean, if you look at Fernando, starts off with Peruvian bagpipes, uh, moving on to um, Chiquitita, Spanish influence, even Gothic hymn like Lay Your Love On Me. It was just so much. And lyrically, um, fantastic. I mean, they started off with the honey, honey, I do, I do, I do's, moving right up to the chanson style stuff of The Winner Takes It All The Day Before You Came. So, for a fan, you actually grew up with the bands, also lyrically as well. And just a good old-fashioned pop song, I always thought, you know, that, that, that hook that grabbed you. That's it, three minutes, 51 seconds of pop. Fantastic. Yeah, and you they never can't... had a punk phase, did you? I did, actually, as oh, well. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, ABBA always uh, were my main... Uh, my main You've got an bands. enormous amount of memorabilia. Uh, what made you move from loving their music into wanting to collect everything? Because that's a different degree of, of, of loving a band, isn't it? I think so, yes, you're right. But a lot of this, of course, as I say, I've collected over the years. I have a lot of um, memorabilia from the 70s itself, really, of course. Uh, you know, going back to the concerts at Wembley and things like that. And you've met them? I did, yes. 1979. I was about 16 at the time. and. Uh, I knew their music publisher in the UK and I met them backstage after their 79 concert which was thrilling, absolutely thrilling. Does anybody in today's charts do you think get anywhere close to the sort of brilliance of ABBA? Is, it, is there a version of ABBA for 2004 around? To be honest with you, I don't think there is. Um, and this is one of the reasons... I thought you might say that. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the reasons why the music has just lasted and lasted. Um, it, it doesn't seem to sort of capture into today's uh, music scene at all. Okay, well fortunately Abba, Abba are still with us, you know, on CD at least, aren't they? Which Absolutely. is good stuff. Bon, thanks very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Now if you are a big Abba fan, check out our website where you can win tickets and accommodation for the June Abba Fest in Brighton. Are you going to be going to that? Are you going to make another trip over here? Very much so. It's uh, all happening down in Brighton, yes. The original Waterloo costumes are making an appearance as well. Brilliant. All right. <laughs> thanks very much indeed. Thank you.